Hi, it's Sandy Shellis with Environmental Coffee House, and today I'm doing a video because my internet is so crappy that uh, I thought it would be time to try the just to do a video and sit outside before it rains. Today we're going to do this on unprecedented crime, clients, climate science denial, and game changers for survival. Dr. P uh, Peter Carter and Elizabeth Woodward. Okay, the book's been out and I've noticed a lot of people are posting about the book on different Facebook venues and, 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 and such. So I thought that I would talk about this book a little bit today and uh, I've been reading it as I go through my healing process and, you know, don't have my uh, neck brace on like I should. But the table of contents has, you know, the usual, the, the foreword is by James Hansen, and uh, there's an introduction. And crimes against, part one is crimes against life and humanity, and, and it's like chapter one is extreme weather around the world, chapter two, science, betrayal, and all of that, which I want you to read. Because today, I'm going right for the heart of it. I'm going right to civil resistance strategies. And the reason why I'm going to read you that is because it's never too late, even if it's too late. And right now, we're going to be gearing up for a fight where I live. I already see it happening. We have a Governor Cuomo that banned fracking in 19, uh, uh, 2014. And there's election, and there are three candidates, and the Republican from downstate is already talking about fracking where I live, okay? Fracking because of probably economic opportunity. But I'll tell you right now, I will lay on anybody's ground and let them kill me first before they frack this county. And I've said it. So I'm gearing up because... Once I'm healed and I'm better, I'm not going to sit back and let this happen. Not to where I live. Like I say, activism is in your own backyard. And I'm going to keep my own backyard from frackers, trucks, pipelines, whatever we have to do. Where I live, the group of activists that I work with in our Environmental Concerned Citizens Group, they fought a radioactive waste dump in the 80s and they won. Okay? They won. It never came here. So here we go. Chapter 11, Civil Resistance Strategies. Starts out with a couple of quotes. A hundred years from now, looking back, the only question that will appear important about the historical moment in which we now live <coughs> is the question of whether or not we did anything to arrest climate change. That was in The Economist in t December 12th, 2011. Introduction. We begin this chapter with a quotation from award-winning criminologist, Dr. Ronald Kramer. Quote, the worst effects of climate change and the harms it will impose upon its victims cannot be avoided unless there are drastic and quick reductions in global greenhouse gas emissions. The energy corporations and their political and ideological supporters understand all too well that achieving these necessary reductions will require a radical reordering of the economic and political systems at the heart of the global capitalist system. That is why they are desperately fighting to avoid and they are using every powerful tool available to them to perpetrate this catastrophic environmental corporate state crime. A crusade, a transformative international social movement that has its goals. The drastic reduction of greenhouse gas emissions is desperately needed. Perhaps we criminologists can play a role in prov provoking this movement by generating moral outrage at the destructive relationship between the fossil fuel industry and states that allows catastrophic climate change and its victimization to continue unabated. As I talked about yesterday, the United States and Russia are in collusion for the destruction of 
this planet by drilling, by oil, by fracking, and all of the above. To inspire moral outrage, people need to enter and feel the stark reality of the emergency described in this book, which I hope you get and read. But for these feelings to break through, people first need to know that they can already be empowered to change this reality, that they can join hundreds and thousands of other people in demanding that their government serve the interests of humanity above the interests of corporations. If we don't do anything, we die. And there are those of you who are going to comment and tell me we're going to die anyway, but so what? This is what we pay governments to do. And our destinies lie in compelling our representatives to finally act for our common good. Their failure to do so is grounds for revolution. We are not proposing the kind of violent revolution that seizes whole populations when autocratic oppression causes visible widespread suffering, although the coming climate catastrophe will dwarf historic suffering unless prevention begins now. No, we are proposing strategies of nonviolent action based on a clear-eyed perception of the slow but inexorable emergency that has been scandalously allowed to unfold for decades, largely as a result of media collusion with corporate and political crime. No. No. Right? Our media crime that should cause particular outrage occurred in July 2017 when the largest UK bank, uh, I mean US bank, JP Morgan Chase declared that it would commit to 100% renewable energy by 2020 and to 200 billion in clean energy financing by 2025. Incredibly, the world was not to know of this enormously significant major bank decision because the U.S. corporate media barely mentioned it, possibly fearing other banks would follow. <laughs> Even the climate-oriented Guardian missed this victory against fossil fuels. How are we to stimulate the outrage to propel a transformative international social movement that has as its goal the drastic reduction of greenhouse gas emissions? So they talk about, they, and they go into emergency mode, the zone that human beings enter when faced by a sudden dangerous crisis. The next little piece is mobilization. And they talk about different things. Um, climate mobilization, and I highly, highly uh, support the climate mobilization, the project. Then they go into civil disobedience. Now I'm going to read this one. Civil disobedience is the deliberate, peaceful violation of the law. It draws its authority from a moral conflict within the individual between the laws of the country and the laws of the conscience. It is a sacrifice made by individuals or groups of people who have the courage to risk prosecution and disfavor. A case in point is Ken Ward and the Valve Turners, uh, Turners from the Climate Disobedience Center, who I interviewed. You just have to find it on Environmental Coffee House. It's on the YouTube. I interviewed Ken. Who, for publicity, closed valves on oil pipelines in order to be arrested and taken to court. At trial, they pursued the climate necessity defense, that climate change is greater harm than civil disobedience and must therefore be prevented. Although Mr. Ward was barred from using the necessity de defense, his second trial in May of 2017 failed to find him guilty of sabotage, Progress was made, however, when the valve turners did later gain a judgment to mount a de necessity defense in October 2017. Nonviolent actions may be divided into those aimed at governments, whose regulation is ultimately responsible for energy policy, and those aimed at industry, which is vulnerable to social disapproval. The Global Nonviolent Action Database lists about a thousand actions, of which we mention a few. 
farmers in protest against governments that favor dirty energy over future generations could band together to roll their tractors and farm equipment into towns and city halls laden remnants of uh laden with remnants of climate damaged crops could we do this in my farming community i don't know i don't think anybody knows how bad it is or how bad it's getting or they're not talking about it we are blockades are high profile actions to slow down public services such as the may 2016 french uh, CGT labor action to block France's oil refineries, fuel depots, and nuclear plants. Action can be organized from a distance, such as the 2008 Icelandic kitchenware revolution against the central bank, during which thousands of citizens assembled for the weekly banging of pots and pans in front of Iceland's parliament. It worked. Top bankers were sent to prison. New schools are emerging to teach organizational skills to social activists. For example, the new Sojourner Truth School, modeled after the civil rights era citizenship and freedom schools, teaches skills for the Trump era. <laughs> we have our very own trainer in this area, and he is amazing. And he, he went, uh, I'm not going to name him because he may not want to, but he teaches civil disobedience. Um, when it's a, a social media has been galvanizing public opinion and bringing people out the streets as it did with the April 29th, 2017 People's Climate March, I went, I reported, which organized a crowd of 200,000 in Washington, D.C., which ran concurrently in 300 other locations. You know, of course, um, the Climate March videos I did and the reporting I did didn't get that much traction on YouTube at the time, but it was still an, an experience that while it, things haven't changed uh, the way we would like them to change, that's the political will. You still wake people up or open their eyes. And even if those sitting at home say, oh my God, look at all those commies, look at all those idiots protesting. There's always going to be a small percent that say, you know, maybe there's something to this. Maybe we ought to look at what's going on. Maybe we ought to open our eyes and take that blindfold off. That blindfold is killing us, guys. It's killing us. If I wasn't as miserably disabled as I am in my spine, I would be doing so much more because that's who I am. And yeah, I did drag my ass to D.C. and I did do it several times. But in my younger days, I did it many times. Anti-war crusades were a big thing for me. And I also marched doing pro-choice with my kid in D.C. in the baby carriage. So I think this book is a pretty good uh, bang for your buck. And it's not all doom and gloom. And it's not. It's got some hopium in it. Sorry, guys, for those of you who don't want to hear the word. They go on and they talk about climate campaigns. Like the climate mobilization, the climate emergency coalition, um, the leap in, in Europe, the health and environmental alliance. And now Stuart Scott uh, has his um, we don't have time. Also divestment from fossil fuels which I actually talked my parents into, I believe I did, that they should look at their portfolio. Pressuring banks to defund fossil fuels. That's a big thing. And that's what the movement does that was protesting that started out in Standing Rock. The anti-pipeline movement is, they did, they, they were doing phenomenal uh, job at pressuring banks and embarrassing banks. Urging pension fund divestment. That's a big thing, too. If you have any money, you call up your broker and you tell them, en masse, we're going. <laughs> Local initiatives. And that's what I say all the time. Uh, clicktivism on the Internet is not enough. We need to get out into community and encourage anger and outrage at the level where people live. The PBS series People's Century Endangered Planet, the 19th episode, shows how the anger vented towards authorities won the case for mothers in Mimamata, Japan, and the Love Canal 
not far from my, where my husband was from, not far from so many of my friends, and people are living there again. So these local initiatives, we need to teach our communities emergency literacy, food literacy, climate literacy, and denial literacy. One excellent tool is skeptical science. I follow and I publish skeptical science. Many excellent films on climate change exist and can be advertised and shown locally with invitations to local media. We did that with the local, uh, we did that with the movie that they made about Allegheny County keeping out the nuclear waste plant. Presentations may be made to municipal council schools, local service clubs, senior residential facilities, and community cable TV. Writing real letters to big oil, big banking, government, and the media is more effective than email. These physical letters need to be read, answered, and filed. So somebody has to open them. On the email, who the hell looks at them? Do you look at half of your emails? And then they go into talking about social media. Some scientists are using social media to urge climate mobilization. A lot of them. The billions of people active on social media make it the major form in which the battle to implement a full climate mobilization will be played out all over the world. So the conclusion. The only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. That well-known statement, often attributed to Edmund Burke, has never been truer than in our time. Dr. James Hansen is a true scientist and courageous activist in struggling to overcome society's willful blindness. He has not only been arrested himself, but has supported others arrested for climate change civil disobedience. Perhaps hope, uh, people hope it'll work out, but does our culture deserve hope? Have we done enough to earn it? Do we passively insist on hope as a way of passing the buck? How can we keep alive without doing something to make it so? People need to hear that hope is not an action verb. Action is our only hope. Most of the cultural and economy-wide actions that we need to take can only be implemented by governments who must be made to have the courage to stand up to corporations and others who are so ecologically illiterate that they put money, greed, and profit before life and survival itself. I'm going to stop with that. I think you should get the book. It's pretty good. It's not just gloom and doom, <laughs> you know, and I can't sit in that, in, in that gloom and doom. And as I'm getting healed, I feel encouraged. I'm discouraged by what I know is coming, the fight I know is coming. But I am encouraged by the fact that I know there's a lot of people that are going to be in it with me. It's what I do. It's what we should do. And, and, and you know, I use the word hopium. I don't know what's to come. I say that all the time. We could be T minus 26. We could just all be done. But until that happens, I can't sit on my ass. And ne neither should you. One little thing you can do. Do something. Do something. Peace. Thank you for coming.